السلام علیکم ناظرین آپ پروگرام دیکھ رہے ہیں روبرو اور میں ہوں آپ کا میزبان شوکت پیراچا امریکہ کی نئی انتظامیہ یعنی ٹرمپ ایڈمنسٹریشن کہہ رہی ہے کہ پاکستان اور بھارت کے درمیان کشیدگی کے تناظر میں وہ اپنا کردار ادا کرے گی امریکہ اور پاکستان کے درمیان تعلقات محض دو طرفہ حوالوں سے ہی اہمیت نہیں رکھتے بلکہ اس خطے کی سلامتی اور استحکام کے لیے بھی ان تعلقات کی بہت اہمیت ہے آج ہم بات کریں گے امریکہ اور پاکستان کے تعلقات کے حوالے سے کچھ ماضی کے حوالے سے پاکستان اور بھارت کے درمیان کشیدگی ختم کرانے کے حوالے سے امریکہ کیا کردار ادا کر سکتا ہے اور یقیناً جب پاکستان اور امریکہ کی بات ہو تو پھر افغانستان کے تناظر میں بھی بات ہوتی ہے ہمارے روبرو ہیں امریکی دفتر خارجہ یعنی سٹیٹ ڈپارٹمنٹ کے سابق ترجمان اور اس کے بعد انہوں نے امریکی انتظامیہ میں بطور امریکی نائب معاون وزیر خارجہ کا کردار ادا کیا ریچرڈ باؤچر ایکسلنسی تھینک یو ویری مچ تھینک یو آر ان پاکستان اینڈ وی تھاٹ دیٹ وی مسٹ اویل دس اپرچونیٹی آئی اسٹارٹ ود دی ریسنٹ ڈیولپمنٹ دی یو ایس ریپرزینٹیو ٹو دی یونائٹیڈ نیشن نکی ہیلی ہیز ہنٹیڈ دیٹ دی ٹرمپ ایڈمنسٹریشن کوڈ پلے اے رول ان ریڈیوسنگ ٹینشن بٹوین انڈیا اینڈ پاکستان واٹ کائنڈ آف رول Trump administration can play? <laughs> um, look, I, I, uh, I think I have to start out by saying I'm here in a totally private capacity. I don't work for the I government. I just need your assessment. I don't work for the government you, anymore. You have the exposure to this region. So whatever I say is just what I yeah, think, sure, sure, I'm sure. not anything that I know from the government. And frankly, it's pretty hard to figure out where the Trump administration is going on a lot of these, on a lot of these issues. I think The statement like she made is probably something that other people have said before. If we can be helpful, we'll be helpful. If we can help diffuse tensions between two countries with which we want to have a very good relationship each, uh, we'll try to do that. Uh, I don't think she was actually proposing mediation or anything like that. But uh, obviously, I think the United States for a long time has tried to figure out how to have a an excellent relationship with Pakistan and an excellent relationship with India. And given the dynamics of the region, that's always been hard. And this administration is going to have to figure that out. But essentially, that's what the United States has been trying to do. Do you really feel that the situation between India and Pakistan, or the tension between the two nuclear countries, that warrants a role by the major powers like the United States and the Trump administration? Well, I think, I think it does, just because of what you said, two nuclear countries. And when there are terrorist attacks uh, across the borders, um, that rapidly escalates in terms of rhetoric. It rapidly escalates in terms of, at times, we've seen mobilization of forces and even threats to use nuclear weapons. So I think it bears a lot of uh, attention from major powers if you have two nuclear countries that, that get spun up every now and then. So the concern back in Washington is real and genuine? Oh, I think any time there are two nuclear countries that can get into confrontation, it's real and genuine. I don't think that's where we start in either of these relationships. I think that's a product of caring about having a good relationship with Pakistan and a good relationship with India. Uh, therefore, we're concerned if they were to get at each other's throats. But the start of this is to have separate uh, excellent relations. Having served as Assistant Secretary of State for South Asia, you've been quite exposed to this region and the realities in the region. When India repeatedly says that there is no role of any external mediation or any good offices from abroad, uh, is there any still a room for role by Trump administration? Um, sure, I think there's always a role for the United States and others. Uh, you know, we've always tried to be helpful on relations between the two. We've always tried to encourage progress on Kashmir without putting ourselves in the middle of it. Um, and we've always tried to diffuse tensions. I mean, you know, remember there have been several instances Uh, particularly after the attacks on the Indian parliament when both sides were mobilizing and threatening to go to war. And, you know, at that time I was with Secretary Powell and we and the British and several others were very active in telling people to, you know, c 
calm down and, and not, get, you know, not get started in that direction. So I think that's always a worry. But as I said, that's not the relationship and that's not the, the goal, never has been the goal of the United States is just to put ourselves between the two, the two countries. We, we want to have a, a, a positive and construction cooperation with Pakistan on many, many fronts. Uh, including bringing peace to Afghanistan, bringing development to Pakistan, and bringing opportunity to the youth and the young people of Pakistan. Um, so that, that's what guides, I think, the U.S. relationship, not a, uh, uh, a desire to, to, you know, to be a, a peacemaker or to put ourselves no, in the middle. No, but that has been, as you said, yeah. when there was a, a standing forces and eyeball to eyeball in the beginning of this century, yeah. there was a lot of shuttle diplomacy. You just uh, talked about Kashmir. Uh, there have been concerns in Pakistan about the recent uh, spate of uh, human rights violation by the occupying forces over there, use of Pelagon and blinding the Kashmiri youth. How much is the concern or, or what is the perception in Washington uh, overall? I think uh, our concern is about human rights violations. Most Americans would agree that uh, you know, that this is a, a, an issue that deserves to be settled. It's long past the uh, due date. And we all know there have been various talks in the past that came close. Um, it's almost uh, like some other issues in the world, one of these places where everybody knows what the solution is, but nobody can quite do it. So I, I think we're all hopeful, but indeed, uh, you know, giving a, a more stable and uh, set of governance arrangements and more, you know, recognized democratic arrangements for all the people. Uh, when Kashmir you say, support. when you say that certain agreements has been very close, one we thought maybe there could have been an agreement between uh, General Praveen Musharraf and the then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. Mm -hmm. uh, you were Assistant Secretary of State at that time. Uh, was there any real breakthrough between the then two leaders, General Musharraf and Manmohan Singh? I think there were some pretty good understandings that uh, a settlement could be reached um, and that uh, one could proceed in that direction maybe in a series of steps. Uh, but ultimately, you know, each of them had to get their own constituencies on board and neither one could quite do it. Uh, what were the broad contours of that understanding between General Musharraf and uh, uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh. Oh, I, I don't think I'd try that. I'd, I'd, if I were you, I'd go back to the newspaper reporting at the time. There was a lot of it out there, <laughs> okay. but okay. I don't think either my understanding or my memory is good enough to give Okay, there you. has been uh, quite a stir in Pakistan over a recent article written by former Pakistan's ambassador Hussein Haqqani back in the United States, where he has uh, written that he was instrumental in sending CIA operatives to Pakistan in pursuit of Osama bin Laden. Uh, when you handled this position, obviously the pursuit was going on. The search for OBL was also on. Do you have anything to, to tell us that uh, what was that process? Uh, no, I don't. I, I, I honestly, uh, I was not I was peripherally involved uh, in, uh, in, you know, the, we were all sort of on the watch for any signs, uh, but other agencies and other players uh, were working it much more actively than I was, and I was not uh, uh, aware of any specific intelligence on where he might be. So State Department was not aware of... No, I didn't say State Department, so I said me. Assistant Secretary of State, yeah. Richard Boucher, he was not aware. I didn't know where Osama bin Laden was. No, I didn't. No, I'm talking of the process of his hunt, in fact. It, you know, the process was conducted by counterterrorism people, intelligence agencies. Uh, uh, there was some, uh, you know, where there was a lot of cooperation with Pakistan on counterterrorism issues as well. So it's not like uh, I didn't feel like it was something I had to do. Hussein Akani has also written, and uh, uh, there has been a wide-ranging perception that the then U.S. administration, uh, you were also a member of that, was not good in terms with General Praveen Musharraf in pursuit of 
terrorists, you know, and they were feeling little uneasy about General Musharraf. Well, I mean, first of all, I, we were not part of the same period in U.S.-Pakistan relations. He became ambassador after I left the job as assistant secretary. I'm talking of the and tenure let me, let me when you were hemming. When, when I was assistant secretary, I used to get uh, regular emails and newsletters from Professor uh, Hussein Haqqani at Boston University telling me all the things I was doing wrong. So uh, he was a very active critic, uh, and, and frankly, I used to talk to him a lot because okay. I thought he had an interesting perspective. But that's just, you know, how he represented Pakistan is a different era and a different period for you guys to, to discuss. Um, you know, I know there was a lot of criticism. There still is. Some of the people I respect most on U.S.-Pakistan relations uh, say that we weren't active enough on democracy when we worked with General Musharraf and during that period. But I think we had a, a positive role in helping Pakistan make the transition from uh, military leadership to uh, peaceful and stable democratic governments. And I think it's to the credit the of all of us. The role was to weaken General Pervez Musharraf no, and let uh, Benazir Bhutto and Nawaz Sharif come back in Pakistan. Yeah, I mean, that's the big process. But the process wasn't to weaken General Musharraf. The process was for him to turn over power to a constitutionally based, capable civilian government. And it's to Pakistan's credit that for, after that process completed, despite the horrible, horrible killing of Benazir Bhutto, uh, the election was held. The first government in Pakistan's history to complete a five-year term yeah, that's very turned good. over but, power but, to the next but, but, government, but, but, and now we have this process going th there was starting one, for a second There term. was another phenomenon here, and yeah. that was the judicial movement against yep. General Praveed Musharraf, sacking of former Chief Justice Iftikhar Chaudhary, and then launching a full-fledged movement that yeah. weakened General Praveed Musharraf, in fact. I'm talking of that era, that even, that phenomenon. Yeah, I think that was probably the first rally of the opposition. That was the first sort of, you might say, uh, organizing rally for the future of democracy in Pakistan. Um, you know, I mean, I think we were pretty clear at the time, certainly in private, that we thought that the, uh, uh, the case against the uh, Chief Justice was a pretty dumb move. Uh, and we weren't too surprised to see the democratic forces come out in strength. But even by that time, the process of transition had already started. Uh, the United States, I remember, also opposed November 3rd, 2007 emergency imposition in Pakistan. This initiative was taken by a very close ally of the United States, that is General Praveen Musharraf. Why United States distance itself from the acts of General Praveen Musharraf? I think we were honest with him. Uh, I thought we had a very honest relationship with General Musharraf as we did with Pakistani politicians. And, you know, I, I met with all the different party leaders, uh, including the Islamic party leaders and the MQM and Nawaz Sharif and, uh, you know, Benazir Bhutto and Asif Zadari in, in those days just to make sure that we were in touch with all the different trends and forces in, in uh, Pakistani society. So we had a, a pretty open and active relationship, broad relationship in Pakistan. Uh, we had a very honest relationship with General Musharraf. When he did things that we thought were important and good, we said so. And when we thought uh, he did things that uh, were not helpful or dumb, uh, we said so as well. We had, we were very, very uh, frank with each other in private, both directions, frankly. Many observers, including Hussein Haqqani, Ambassador Hussein Haqqani, feel that uh, General Musharraf was having a double game vis-a-vis counterterrorism, and that's why United States got annoyed with him and thought or decided to help Nawaz Sharif and Benazir Bhutto stage a return back to Pakistan. I don't think I'd put it that way. I think we saw a return to civilian rule as an essential part of helping Pakistan stabilize and eliminate terrorism from within its country. Excellency, I have to take a break. Nadreen, break lete hain. Break ke baad jab wapas aayenge, to apni isi guftagu ko mazid aage badayenge. Stay with us.
ویلکم بیک ناظرین ہمارے روبرو ہیں آج امریکہ کے سابق نائب مومن وزیر خارجہ ریچرڈ باؤچر یور ایمفسائزنگ اینڈ رائٹلی ایمفسائزنگ آن ایلیمنیشن آف ٹیرزم نو آر ایز دیر از فینامن آف اینٹی ٹیرر الائنس آف دا مسلم ملٹریز لیڈ بائی سعودی عربیہ کنگڈم آف سعودی عربیہ ڈو یو سی اٹ ایز اے پازیٹیو ڈیولپمنٹ It doesn't make sense from what I've seen in the press. And I don't have any other information to say it, you know, to explain it with. So at this point, it's hard to understand um, what this is supposed to be, this, this uh, Sunni force or Muslim League or whatever is being discussed. Um, I don't, uh, I, you know, I, I think we have to be very careful about framing things in sectarian terms. Uh, and I think particularly for a country like Pakistan, which has all the different constituencies, all the different religious groups, all the different trends in society, you know, we ought to be thinking more about how do you help a country like Pakistan create a modern and moderate democracy than taking sides against one or the other sectarian groups. What do you assess, you know, again, an assessment from an expert like Your Excellency, about the, the perceptions of President Trump administration about this coalition because the powerful defense minister of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Prince Mohammed bin Salman, was recently in Washington, had a very good meeting with uh, President Trump, must have talked about something, you know, on, on this issue. I assume so, but I don't know. I don't think they said anything in public. Uh, I. You know, it's, the, the Trump administration is sort of slow getting started both on the personnel side and on the policy side. It's not unusual. It's not unique. Uh, maybe they're a little slower than most in the past. But they haven't said a whole lot on specific issues yet. Uh, they do have a very anti-Iranian tendency. Both of them. Uh, the Trump administration yeah. does. And therefore, one has to assume that getting tougher on Iran is going to mean getting closer to people like the Saudis who don't like Iran either. But how far that will go, uh, we'll just have to see. But going tougher with Iran was policy of George Bush administration even, which you represented for this region. So it's a continuity of, continuity of the Republican thoughts and processes that they used to carry forward now. Yeah. I guess so. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm a, I was a career diplomat. I worked for Democrats. Yeah. I worked for Republicans. Uh, I think I understand some of the thinking on both sides. I mean, personally, I think the U.S.-Iran nuclear agreement that the Obama administration reached was a very important and valuable breakthrough. And I, you know, I'd like to see it maintained. I'd like to see it carried out on both sides. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's my hope. Uh, As, as of yet, we haven't seen any concrete moves, but certainly the Republicans and the new people in the Trump administration have been sharp critics of that. So, you know, I'm still hoping that the agreement will survive. Uh, I'm still hoping the agreement will be carried out uh, by Iran, but also by the United States. And so we'll have to see about that. But um, at this point, you know, it's speculation to say what's going to happen. I can't figure out exactly what they're going to do about it. This is going to be the third administration, thir third president, you know, that the F1 scenario remains the same. Uh, what do you assess the policy of President Trump towards Afghanistan now? Well, he's being urged by military commanders to put some more troops in there. Um, I think any American president has to say that, you know, um, we want a stable Afghanistan. We want an Afghanistan that is Uh, not being assailed by Taliban or by foreign forces. Uh, so I think it's important, uh, it may, you know, whether he puts more troops in or not, it's important to ask yourself what's the long term stability of Afghanistan going to be based on? And the long term stability of Afghanistan is going to be based on better government and support of its neighbors. Uh, just as one has to say it's great that Pakistan has been extending government control throughout the territory into the tribal areas and bringing stable civilian governance now to the tribal areas. That's really important for
for the long-term stability of Pakistan. And the Afghan government has to need to figure out how to do the same thing, how to bring good governance and government services to people throughout the country. So to do that, they're going to need our support in terms of money, expertise, and perhaps some more but military, the two that but also the support of their neighbors. Yeah, and that's so we ought to be working to promote cooperation yeah. between That's what them I was going to ask. Yeah. The neighbor support is undoubtedly very, very important. Yeah. But now I don't really foresee today even, you know, that the two governments, the government of Afghanistan, Dr. Ashraf Ghani government and uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif government, they, they are not interacting with each other. President Ghani is annoyed with Pakistan. Uh, the reform that we are talking of, FATA, which you are praising, you yeah. know, in tribal areas, <coughs> Afghanistan doesn't like it. How the two governments can sit together or they can be re-brought back to the table for moving forward? Well, I think, first of all, they've got to keep talking. <laughs> Obviously. And second, and, and that's good. I mean, there has been progress, at least on that front, that they've been talking. Uh, you know, second of all, they've got to look for things that they can do together that will really you know, improve the relationship. And I, and I do think the extension of governance on both sides, each done individually, but recognizing the other side is trying to do the same thing as you, and that you're trying to do, the, they're recognizing you're trying to do the same thing as them. That's an important factor to understand that ultimately that's where stability will. And then there are specific areas of cooperation that could help. Uh, one is obviously uh, better control at the border crossings and, and border areas. and to the extent the United States can help with that, we should. That the is other, one I of think the bone of contention that I, I Pakistan know. is not determined to manage its border, border yeah. control. Of one side, it doesn't like it. Well, you know, you're going to have to get over it. They're going to have to get over it. Um, How can they be made to recognize the importance of border management? Look, I've been a critic of President Trump's plan to build yeah. a wall with Mexico. so. You know, unless we U.S. and Mexico cooperate on border management, we're not going to control our border, even in the United States, without an insurgency going on. So uh, it takes a, an effort on both sides uh, to recognize that having, you know, stability in each country means there's got to be a well-controlled border between the two. And to the, I think the United States ought to be supporting an effort and, and working with both sides on that. There has been a lot of talk about reconciliation within Afghanistan. First, when in 2010, in January, there was London conference and there was a reintegration plan. But then it came to be known as reconciliation. Do you foresee this process moving forward or it's dead now? I think it's always been on the table. And it's always been on the table because it's just a fact of life. You don't have a stable Afghanistan if a large portion of the population doesn't feel they're properly represented and properly taken care of by their government. Um, so it's important for the Taliban to think of how they can become part of a, a totality of Afghanistan. Uh, and it's important for the friends of the Taliban, people who have those contacts, to say, you've got to decide. You've got to decide if you want to be an insurgency group with everybody chasing you and trying to kill you, or do you want to be part of the future of Afghanistan and figure out how to participate in a future Afghan That government. needs certain incentives and messaging to the Taliban that, yeah. very good that you're talking that they should be part of the everyday life in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. But do you feel there is a gap then? Sure, there's a gap, and there's a whole any number of things that need to be negotiated. I mean, none of us, not the Afghan government, not the world community, are going to say, well, you can have, uh, you can have helmet, you know, and you can, you can beat women, uh, and you can persecute people who have beards, and you can send girls away from school. You know, we're, nobody's going to do that. So they've got to figure out how to be part of a modern Afghanistan. We're not going back to what the Taliban used to do in Afghanistan. I don't think anybody wants that. Excellency, I have to take another break. Nadreen, break lete hain. Break ke baad jab wapas aayenge, to zara isi Afghan tanadur mein Rus ke kirdar ke hawale se bhi baat karenge. Stay with us. Welcome back, Nadreen. Rubru program mein aaj ham guftgu kar rahe hain. America aur Pakistan ke talukat ke hawale se 
افغانستان میں سلامتی کی صورت حال کے حوالے سے اور خصوصاً روس اب افغانستان میں دلچسپی لے رہا ہے اس پر بھی بات کریں گے اور ہمارے روبرو ہیں ریچرڈ باؤچر یو یو ور ٹاکنگ آف دی نیبرس اسسٹنس فار اسٹیبلٹی ان افغانستان نو انڈیا از پارٹ آف ہارٹ آف ایشیا گروپ دی استنبول پروسیس دیٹ واز ٹو برنگ ان دی نیبرس فار اسٹیبلائزنگ یو نو دس وار ٹون کنٹری بٹ وین پروکسیز لائک بٹوین انڈیا اینڈ پاکستان اور سم ادر کنٹریز دے کنٹینیو ہاؤ کین دس نیبر ہڈ بی ہیلپ فل اور ادر یو نو دیئر اون پروکسیز اسٹارٹ ارپٹنگ یو نو آن دی آن دی نیم آف افغانستان یا آئی ایم ناٹ گن ڈس اگری ود یو آئی ڈونٹ سی ہاؤ اٹ کین بی ایف ایف افغانستان از اے پلیس ویر ادر پیپل پلے دین اٹس ناٹ گن بی اسٹیبل سو افغانستان اسٹیبلٹی از گن ہیو ٹو بی فاؤنڈ ان افغانستان by the way the Afghans organize themselves, the way the Afghans run their government, the way the Afghans take care of their population. But it'll be an easier job for the Afghan government if other st people stop, you know, sort of pursuing their own interests. Another phenomenon has also emerged, and there are widespread reports that now the Russians are coming back to Afghanistan, and uh, they are partnering with uh, the Taliban through weapons or through funding. Uh, what's your assessment, sir? You know, I don't know how valid some of those reports are. I hope they're not true. I suspect some of them may be and some of them not. Um, I'm pretty suspicious of the Russians these days. I do know, understand that they have interests. Um, I do understand that, uh, you know, we have to deal with Russia. Uh, on the other hand, I think there are a lot of things the, Russian do around the Russians are doing around the world Uh, just to cause trouble and just to, uh, you know, sort of cause trouble for other people so that they don't have to worry about their own problems at home. Whether these reports are true or not, yeah. but on the diplomatic front, something is certain that first the Russians invited Chinese and Pakistanis in Moscow. The trilateral meeting was on Afghanistan. Then some other countries, six or seven other countries were invited again in Moscow on Afghan scenario and now by the middle of this month they have invited around 12 countries you know so their interest in Afghanistan is not a matter of concern uh, by the United States for the United States I or it's normal you the United States will welcome Russian re-engagement in Afghanistan I think the United States and the new administration are probably pretty suspicious of whatever the Russians do That said, we're not looking for confrontation with Russians. If, if the Russians can actually contribute to stability and peace in Afghanistan, that's good. Nothing in their history would indicate that's their intention, but maybe that is. <coughs> so I think you, know, you have to come down to the point of, is it working or not? And that, that gets back to the basic philosophy of how Afghan's gonna, Afghanistan's going to find peace. Is it that all the countries around Afghanistan are going to decide what's good for Afghanistan and tell them what to do? Or is it that Afghans internally are going to figure out how to cooperate and how to build governance in Afghanistan? I think that has to be the lead. And the other countries around have to support that. So every country should be measured by how is it is helping Afghanistan to build a peaceful state. And Every country that's a neighbor of Afghanistan has to be thought of in terms of whether they contribute or hinder that process. Uh, how is the perception uh, in different circles in Washington, think tanks and uh, uh, senior ex-officials like Your Excellency, about Haqqani network now? Because uh, previous two presidencies, they have a lot of things to talk about Haqqani network, but now Zarbe Azma operation cleared North Vidiristan agency sanctuaries or, or their structure or their communication centers, they are dismantled. Do you feel that or, or the perception back in Washington is now there is nothing of the Haqqani network that Pakistan is supporting? I think the perception in Washington is that the Haqqani network is still able to operate across the border that they have assets and capabilities on both sides, that uh, indeed Pakistan probably knows about what they're doing on this side of the border, 
but that as long as they can operate on both sides of the border, uh, they're going to be trouble for both of us, for us and for Pakistan. So um, that's where sort of border management comes in. Comes in. That's where finishing, consolidating, stabilizing the operation in the tribal areas, consolidating stability, building local governance, uh, all that comes into play because... Army Chief General Khamar Javed Bajwa yeah. recently uh, stated that uh, there are at least two border points where we are, the Pakistanis are erecting fences. Yeah. Is a welcome move. Yeah, sure, it's a welcome move, but, uh, you know, again, we're, <laughs> we're talking a lot in the States about the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, you've got, what, 2,600 kilometers of border? Uh, 260 posts, uh, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't know the exact number of border crossings, but, you know, it's a lot, it's a big area, and it's a tough area, it's a very, I've been up there, it's a pretty, uh, pretty hard area to manage, so I, uh, I, know, I, give, I give the Army credit for what they've done so far, and uh, realize it's a big task. Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank it has been a pleasure much. talking to you, Nadrin. Baachit aap sun rahe the, America ke sabik دفتر خارجہ کے ترجمان بھی تھے اور اس کے ساتھ ساتھ امریکی نائب معامن سیکیٹری خارجہ یعنی ان کے نائب معامن وزیر خارجہ بھی رہے ہیں پاکستان اور افغانستان اور انڈیا کے حوالے سے ہم نے ان کی پرائیویٹ کیپیسٹی میں ان سے بات چیت کی ہے کیونکہ اب یہ کسی امریکی حکومت کے عوضے میں نہیں ہے لیکن اس ریجن کے ایکسپرٹ ہونے کی وجہ سے ہم نے سوچا کہ ان کے خیالات آپ تک پہنچائیں اور پھر انہوں نے وعدے کر دیا کہ پاکستان اور افغانستان کے درمیان تامون ہی اس خطے میں سلامتی اور استحقام کے لیے بنیادی انصر ہے اپنے میزبان شوکت پیراچہ کو پروگرام روبرو سے اجازت دیجئے خدا حافظ